for most of baseball history when a team wasn't playing well. They fired the manager. Phillies just did that. It took a while to realize that baseball is a GM's game. The person who puts together the roster, the manager, can only do so much. But now more than ever, it's changed a little bit more. It's an organizational game, more than just the GM. It's baseball ops, coaching, maximizing performance. The effort must be cohesive. So the Phillies spend money, and their big star is great. So why isn't this team winning? Let's do some digging in. The Phillies have had a top five payroll, but over the last three years have been around a 500 club, missing the playoffs the last two years and currently are 11 games out of first place this year. It's a club built on offense, but over the last three years, the Phillies are just around a league average at the plate, 16th in weighted runs created plus. There are 30 teams. That hitting has not been enough to bail out a terrible bullpen and awful defense. Over the last three seasons, those are the Joe Girardi seasons, the bullpen has been the worst in the major leagues, the worst park-adjusted ERA in baseball in that span. So, the pen is bad, right? But defensively, this club is in a league of its own. Over the last three seasons, those same seasons, the Phillies are dead last in defensive runs saved, in the negative, and last by a wide margin. Look at how close the other trailers are. Tigers, Angels, Nationals, A's, they're all like within, what, five of each other, right? Then, look, the Phillies are twice as bad. The Phillies are double their numbers into the negative, minus 113. That's staggering. So that's why the Phillies spending this offseason was so puzzling. They shored up the bullpen, did a decent job. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But the bulk of the money went to two players who are known to be deficient fielders. The Phillies paid top dollar for not one, but two impact hitters. You could definitely make a case to sign either Kyle Schwarber or Nick Castellanos. Separately, both can hit, no doubt, but neither can field. Schwarber was negative eight in defensive runs saved last year. Castellanos, negative seven, and that's not their worst years. And they signed both of them. When Bryce Harper was forced to DH, they were forced to the field, exacerbating the club's number one problem. So the Phillies are not a good baseball team out on the field, physically, in the real world. But they have real talent. In fact, what's strange about the Phillies, you know, it's usually the big signings and the big commitments that will sink a club or keep a club back. But the big deals for the Phillies have worked out. Bryce Harper has been great as a Philly, a better hitter for the Phillies than he was the previous three years for the Nationals. He gets $25.4 million a year, AAV, but he's been very productive. They signed Zach Wheeler to a five-year, $118 million deal with a sketchy track record, but he's worked out beautifully. He has a 2.87 ERA over the three years so far. While we're talking starters, the club also signed Aaron Nola to an extension. Five years of club control for $61 million back in 2019. Nola has been excellent. That's a great move. And they traded for JT Real Muto, their catcher. They signed him then to a five-year, $115.5 million contract extension. Now, he hasn't exactly gotten to another level, but in his four years with Philadelphia, he is number one among all catchers in the game in war. They've all worked out. Harper, Wheeler, Real Muto, Nola, they are four of the top six on the club in terms of salary. The other two are Castellanos and Schwarber, who, again, have not been busts. So it's not spending at the top end. So where, besides defensively, is it not working? Well, one thing you always hear from winning clubs, the basics are drafting and developing. You get cost-effective labor when you draft picks. When your draft picks become foundation players. Here are the top draft picks from 2014 to 2019 for the Phillies. Aaron Nola was a good pick. In 2015, they whiffed on a high school shortstop. They got Scott Kingery in the second round. That hasn't worked out. The big get was in the fifth round. Maybe Reese Hoskins hasn't become an MVP candidate, but he's a good player. That worked. From there, though, Mickey Moniak was a 1-1, the top overall pick. First round, number one overall. Adam Hazley, Alec Bohm, Bryson Stott rounded out. There's still time, especially for Bohm and Stott. But I think it's fair to say the Phillies have not gotten a big impact from their recent drafts. It leads to another question. Besides Bryce Harper, how many players have you seen break out while with the Phillies? Through the years, Odubel Herrera, Michael Franco, Gene Segura, it's been rare for a player to go to Philadelphia and get better. Performance maximizing is the thing in baseball today. 
Think of the Dodgers, Justin Turner, Chris Taylor, Max Muncie, all became great, not just good, when they put on Dodger blue. The Yankees are filled with players who got better once they hit that organization. DJ LeMahieu, Gio Urshela, Luke Voigt. Not everybody gets better, but they have a lot of success stories. Look at the Giants last year. Almost all of their older guys hit a new peak last season. Brandon Crawford, Buster Posey, Evan Longoria, Brandon Belt. It's not some perfect science, but some clubs using the latest tools, tech, investing, and coaching have gotten much better at making their players better. The Phillies are not one of those clubs and the manager is just one part of the machine.